Hey, good afternoon, everybody. I'm Tom Stewart. I'm with Liz Trotter, Derek Christian, and this is Smart Business Moves. Woohoo! <laughs> hey, guys. Howdy. You're for a special treat today. We're going to be giving, uh, I guess, actually, over the next uh, three weeks, we're going to be doing a uh, very condensed overview of kind of the, 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 the highlights of our foundations course and some of the materials that we've uh, developed and, and used in that program over the years. Hey, Denise. And um, Derek is, is going to be sharing some uh, super cool stuff about uh, market plans and uh, calendars and let him get into all the nuts and bolts on that. But uh, Derek, what's, what's been going on in your world, man? It's been a while. i just been busy uh, running around doing uh, lots of cleaning services in different places. So uh, between Colorado and St. Louis and Cincinnati, it's been nuts. So. Hmm. Busy, busy boy there. How's business? I'm really busy. Things have really picked up in the last few weeks. In fact, our biggest problem is most people is at this point hiring. But uh, one of the companies, uh, the one in Cincinnati, we added 12 biweekly customers last week. Um, it's been a long time since I've seen numbers like that. So um, it's definitely starting to heat up. I think in Ohio, we're up to 32 or 22% of the population's gotten their vaccine, another 10%'s gotten sick. So about a third of the population at this point that figures immune. So I think people are starting to roll back in pretty quick. Nice. Yeah. Hey, Linda. Yeah, the numbers just continue to drop. Do we have uh, an update on the numbers, Tom, that we can show? I can uh, pull Hey, Starlene. Out. Yeah, spring is wide open. I know, spring is jumping now. Uh, let's see, Tom, I was going to send you something real quick. See if you can maybe help me. I'm sorry, with you and Derek. Um, and you have a second. You can look at that. What my problem is. Or the schedule. <laughs> All right, so. Well. Did you say it was Microsoft that had some sort of a? Yeah. Are you able to, are you able to get into um, SharePoint? No, no, no I can't either. I don't I'd know. request access. Yeah, we were doing a. Uh, I had a meeting with with uh, Arxy earlier today, and we were they used Microsoft Teams, and Microsoft Teams wasn't happy, and they called uh, Microsoft yeah. User Support, and it sounded like it they were doing a fire drill. Oh, bummer. Uh, we wound up using Zoom. But, uh, well, we all know that feeling, right? When <laughs> being on the other side of that, when you're the one that everybody is contacting because your stuff's not working right. <laughs> it's panicky. Hey, Sarah. Good to see you, Sarah. I I saw you earlier today and I meant to tell you, but we, were, we got busy and that was in the MMA group. You look great today. Yeah, even though you're at work. <laughs> Because I know you're not normally there. All right. So, Tom, you're going to show us some numbers, yeah? Well, I can show you a pretty graph. I mean, okay. it's... Uh, I like it. Some of the numbers here are... Oops. This is so tiny. Tiny, tiny. Just look at the seven-day average. It's uh, back down here to, to less than 50, which, if you remember... Back in the summer when we had this peak, we thought 50 was a, was a really bad number. Yeah. But after being to the point where, <laughs> go away, um, it was like uh, like 280,000. Yeah. The numbers are, 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 are dropping in a, in a good way. Now, well, death rates are even dropping even more extreme yeah. since seniors are getting vaccinated. I think in Ohio, they had like 12 yesterday. So it's quickly good starting to dissipate in that regards. Yeah, the, the death number has been declining really, really well for a while too, thankfully. The new strains seem milder. Yeah, and uh, the thinking is like most people are still getting the uh, the um, messenger RNA vaccines, which is a two-part thing, the uh, Moderna and, and, and Pfizer, and usually they're spread like three or four weeks apart. But even after... You get that first shot after the first week or so. 
the chances of, of, of dying are, are, are basically gone at that point. So there's a whole lot of people that are, are, are fully vaccinated, but are feeling a whole lot better about uh, being able to take risks and get out and invite service contractors into their home and so forth. Yeah. You had, uh, did you have a, a immunization, Tom? I did um, a week ago. When was it? It was last Wednesday. So it's been almost a week. And it was, you had the single? No, right? it was it's, uh, it was the, uh, the Pfizer. So I also had, I had both my Pfizer's. So. Oh, you had them both. Yeah. Oh, that's right, Derek. You said that your second one was painful. Um, you were I, sick. I got chills pretty badly at night and was shaking the bed. So, um, but <laughs> it passed within about 12 hours. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Yeah. Yep. I had heard that the, uh, the single shot is not as uh, devastating to our bodies, but I was, I haven't talked to anybody. It's also it. why they say it's not as effective. The stronger your reaction, the more effective your body was at fighting it. So right. there's pluses and That's minuses. Right. When, I, when I got it, uh, my doctor said, if I got it in a different arm, the reaction wouldn't be as strong because um, when you get it in a different arm, your body's response is, Hey, that virus we had a couple weeks ago is back. Let's use the same thing we used to kill it last time. So you basically have the same immune reaction. But when it appears in the exact same place, your body's thought process is whatever we did didn't work last time. So let's crank it up a few notches. Yeah. Kick this into high gear. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. So much as you might not want to have it in the same arm, do it anyway. Yeah. You want to be really, really safe. Well, all right. Good news anyway with the. The numbers going down. No, like I said, we're going nuts. It's it's crazy. So we're pretty excited actually. As we all have, the problem is hiring people. So yeah. Uh yeah, we're yeah, that's that's actually what our meeting on Friday is all about. It's yep. all about recruiting and hiring because it's well, we just can't hire fast enough. I mean, when you're twelve bi weekly customers is cleaner. So I mean, in one week yeah. we need a new person. Even if we were hundred percent staffed, we need a new person. So yeah. And you don't just need a new person. You need a new person that's fully trained, right. <laughs> ready yeah. to go. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. This, this is going crazy all over the place, which is awesome. Yay. No, it's good. Well, yeah. and especially yeah. with, it, it's going to be a strange year. It's hard to describe because it's really busy yet at the same time with some of the tax credits and stuff from last year and the second round PPP, it's an interesting year, so in a good way. Yeah, I'm Maybe a good time to do rate increases, huh? Yeah, I, I think everybody hopefully is. We we do need to talk a little bit at some point in time about the differentiation between rate increases and price increases and rate adjustments and price adjustments. Not today. We're not doing that today. Oh come so, on! You no. Know, no, sorry. Today we're we're letting Derek lead the show. He's got a, a bunch of cool information. But actually, Derek, before you get started, I did want to talk to everybody about um, what we're doing over the course of the next three weeks. Yeah, three weeks. Yeah, three weeks. Yeah. And Tom already told you we're going to be doing some foundations pieces. Um, but the other piece of that is Derek's going to be doing... Um, um, presenting on Mondays. Tom's going to be presenting on Tuesdays. I'm presenting on Wednesdays and Thursdays. We're going to have something different going on, something kind of fun, maybe, or I don't know, just a little different. So it's kind of a surprise. We're not telling y'all what that's going to be yet on Thursdays. And we're tr we were hoping to be able to get the topics out to you guys, but right now Outlook is blocking all of us saying we don't have access to our own info that's what we were talking about earlier so we can't give you the actual um calendar of events yet but look for that we'll be uh, sending it out soon actually i was able to pull it up on my side so what i've got at least for this week so i'm doing the marketing calendar today um tom's gonna be talking about making sense of your financial statements on tuesday and we're messing with them a little bit uh yeah, this week you, you, right wednesday we're doing uh our foundation's alumni reunion Thursday, we're doing uh, improve your recruitment uh, and retention process. Next week, I'm back up on Monday with uh, SEO plain language. Tuesday, uh, Tom's doing using pay, price, and productivity and efficiency to maximize your profits. Boy, that's a long title. Um, 
Wednesday, Liz is doing uh, the necessity necessity of consistent ongoing training and education. And then that last week of March, I'm heading off sales as a teachable skill. Tom's doing uh, stacking revenue with high frequency recurring clients. And then the last day of uh, March, Liz, you're doing controlling your quality standards. Cool. Hey, Derek, can you uh, send the link over or, or take a picture of that and send it yeah, over? Either I'm trying. Don't send a link because we've still can't get in. Right. <laughs> take a screenshot. Yeah. Are you in awesome. SharePoint or is that, was that in the email? Um, that's an email, but I don't know if you guys remember, I actually don't use Outlook. I use a program called Missive as my front end, which yeah. might be why I'm able to get in and you guys aren't because I'm not actually using Outlook. I'm using something that lays on top of it. Right. That does make sense. All right. So, Derek. Yeah. You ready? You ready? I'm ready. All right. Let's get us started here. So yeah, what we want to talk about today, and part of the point of this whole concept is, for those of you that don't know, is we teach uh, a program called Foundations of Success, and we typically do it uh, once a year, and uh, obviously we took a year off with COVID, and this year in October is actually going to be the last time we're teaching it together. Um, I don't know what you guys may have planned in the future, but I'm not going to be teaching it again, so it'll be, be the last time we teach it exactly as it has been in the fat past, so it's our we said before it's our last time, but this really is our last time. Um, people kept demanding we do it again. Um, and I've uh, moved on and signed a contract to do some different type of work in the future, so I can't. But this will be our last time actually teaching it. So we wanted to actually do a preview of some of the stuff. And Foundations is a pretty intense week-long experience. We all get in one place, really get in detail working on our businesses. Um, and it's different from any other program because... Um, it's about figuring out you, your business, what works for you, what your strengths and weaknesses are, and making sure that all the pieces work together. Um, there's a lot of uh, programs out there that teach you a specific way to do things. And uh, we've always been really big on the best way to do it is your way and helping you figure out what your way is. So, uh, But the biggest thing is we all just spend a, a week in, in what we call the mansion and really get in depth. And I tend to teach the marketing topics, and that's why you're going to see me teaching some marketing stuff. And so today we're going to do a preview. We give a lots of things in foundations, and one of the things we give away is a marketing calendar. Um, and I'm actually going to show it on the screen here in a little bit. Um, but basically, I'm a big believer in having a marketing calendar because life gets busy. You end up having to recruit people, cleaners happen, chaos with customers, and there's a tendency to kind of not follow through on your marketing as you'd intend it. So normally I like to, in December, because that's normally a pretty slow time for my business, uh, take a day away from our business and come up with a plan for the year. And for me, as a guy who's pretty high on marketing, that means coming up with a marketing calendar, which is month by month, what are we going to be doing to try to drive our business? And I normally do it off a theme. So I'll see if I can actually share this here just to give you an idea. So I'm going through the steps to share. It takes a second. All right. So this is a marketing calendar that I put together for uh, one of the cleaning companies I'm involved with in Cincinnati. And it actually does both window washing and maid service. So you're going to see both on here. But basically what we do is we come in and by month, just kind of think through what do we want to do with things like live events. Um, we're not doing radio this year, but we had done it in previous year. What are the Facebook themes we want to be talking about? What is the Facebook advertising? Um, basically everything. So we'll come in here and you'll see, um, I don't have something filled in every single month and that is okay. Sometimes people see this marketing calendar and they think the goal is to actually fill in every block. It doesn't always make sense to fill in every block. Like for live events, I have one a live event, which was Taste of Blue Ash, which is scheduled um, in August every year in Cincinnati. Obviously, it didn't happen last year, um, but we're hoping it happens this year. And that's the one live event. So I don't want to make people feel like their goal with this thing is to go in there and actually fill out every single box because it's not. It's just to think about what do I want to do with live events? Maybe do it every single month or not. You know, uh, what am I going to do with Facebook advertising? You can see that hey, I don't. Yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt, but is there any way, could you blow that up? It's really tiny. Sure. I'll see really, if I can make really, it bigger. Really, tiny. Yeah. Even if we can't see the whole thing, just seeing. No, I get it. Portion. Up to where it says view, the top menu. Yep. I'm getting there. I was trying my normal shortcut, but it wasn't behaving. And click on that zoomy thing. Actually, down at the bottom right, there's a uh, see where it says. Oh, there it is. Yeah, my slider. 
I always yeah, I do that slider. Yeah, that's the easiest way for me. I normally mm -hmm. do control. There we go. That's way and better. You got that little banner there that says Thanks, stop Sarah. sharing. If you click hide next to it, it'll oh, Okay, I've heard it was like Zoom. Normally that thing gets hidden on Zoom. Um, so yeah, what I typically do is I come in here and think about what we want to do and then um, fill out our concepts. So um, what email offer in February is going to be a Valentine's offer. We're also going to be talking about Valentine's on Facebook. Um, we are planning on giving away a year of free cleaning next year. So I don't, you guys probably know this, but I'm really big on public relations. So in January, what we want to be talking about for PR is that we're giving away a year of cleaning, doing press releases, trying to get on the news, things like that. Um, are we doing any cross promotions with anyone? Um, do we plan to use Thumbtack or Home Advisor? What do we want to do on our website? Um, what are the blog topics we want to cover? And then, like I said, we're going to do a year round contest to give away a year of free cleaning. Um, now for the website, you can see, for example, we're planning on having a new website live and now I'm losing my header. So that was, it looks like in April. Um, and then every single month after that, we want to launch a landing page. So that's what LP stands for is in May, I wanted to get the Blue Ash landing page live in Westchester. We want to, in uh, June, we're going to do Westchester, et cetera. And the idea is if you just think about what you want to do every single month, you can then assign these to people. Because the chances are, if Derek tries to do all this, this isn't going to happen because I'm not so good at getting all this stuff done. Um, but I can start dishing this stuff out to other people. Um, now, for example, on Facebook, a lot of times what I would also do is set a goal of having so many things that we want to talk about in a month um, and how many times do we want to bring it up, et cetera. So this is a pretty detailed plan. This is a, the, this company, in, the, the Cincinnati company is pretty good size. And I'm not necessarily recommending that we're doing that, uh, you guys be doing Valpack and EDDM, Every Door Direct Mail, for maid service. This company also does window washing, and window washing responds very well to direct mail. House cleaning, not as well. So I don't want people out there going, oh, Derek does Valpack. I need to copy it. Um, if you're not doing window washing, I'm not sure that makes sense for you. It does make sense for window washing. Works pretty well. So I know, Liz, you guys have seen these a couple of times. Um, what do you think? What have you done with it before? Yeah, um, same same basic thing, Derek. Um, we probably use a little bit different version. It's been modified since uh, foundations. We use a different one in the MMA groups. Well, same same concept because this this is a winning concept. The only thing that is different is we have a budget. Yeah. Like how what's the the budget for the month that's included, and then how much are we going to spend in each area? Yeah. So, so I, I I wanted to start with kind of the basic idea because. It's a yeah. little bit easier to grasp it on this concept, uh -huh. but I'm actually there with you. Tom, you're going to be proud of me. <laughs> He's going to show so, something. This is actually uh, an, Excel, an Excel spreadsheet that we use that gets into detail. Of what lead source is it? How much are we spending on using it? How many um, jobs do we expect out of it? What's our cost per job going to be? And then we can track our results. I'm pointing at the screen like you guys can see it. Of how much yeah. did we book out of it? And then we come down here to the bottom which I then look at by month. And I have what's called my inspirational goal. Um, once again, those of you that uh, worked with us in the past know that I like having two goals, one of which is what I call our stretch or inspirational, which is what I'd like to do. And then the SMART goal is what I'm confident I can do. So think of it as you budget off of your SMART goal, but you mark it for your inspirational goal. And uh, we then track what our actual work orders per, are per month. So yeah, we I definitely uh, mm -hmm. can take it down to... Uh, this level of detail as well. Um, but this can get a little confusing. You got to kind of understand the concept first before you dive deep into the month by month execution. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, hey, Derek, we can't really see anything on this. It's like smaller than an Yeah, ant. that's even smaller than the other one. Fine. Let yeah. Me, but a little bit. The colors, I like the colors. So, so, for example, in the month of January, we're planning on spending $2,000. I'm expecting a minimum of 98 jobs for that, then I can come in and put in my actuals. So, okay, I got then, you. Uh, then up top here that we were looking at shows all of my different channels of advertising. And then how much I'm planning on spending on each and how much how much out of each job am I hoping to get. Okay, Oof. wow, yeah. it's a lot in there. You can definitely take it super issues. detailed. Now, that yeah. tends to be a little bit confusing. And once again, we give some tools uh, that are appropriate to the level of detail you want to get into. 
Um, I like doing the one that I've got on the screen now when I'm teaching the concept, just because it helps people understand. Um, yeah. what, what are we talking about? What are the things we can do? And for example, you can see on public relations, some of the ideas we came up with is we're doing the year of free cleaning. Um, I used to do uh, morning spots on Fox 19 News where I would do cleaning tips. We're going to do that again. Uh, we're going to do some PR around window cleaning basically in April. Um, basically tips for it that we're hoping will get picked up by local publications. We're going to do some guest blogs. We're going to do a dirtiest places video contest. Um, we're going to do maid service thing. And then we're going to do uh, dirtiest places sweeps week basically when we're announcing the winner. So that doesn't always make sense if you don't get my terminology. But And then... Those that have followed me over the years also know I like working with partners. So I like working with people like our dry cleaner that we partner with. Um, I like to work with dream dinners for Mother's Day. And then I, I used to own a dog daycare. So I typically do a lot of cross promotions with local area dog daycares. Um, I like working with businesses that basically have the same clients as us, which is people that trade money for free time, um, but aren't necessarily direct competitors. So people who pay to get their laundry done, people who pay to get people to make their food, people who pay for someone to take care of their dog while they're at work. These are all basically people trading money for time. And that's really our customer. All right, cool. Um, one of the things that I was, can you tell about your, oh yeah, go ahead, Denise. That Denise wants to know if you could share about your dry cleaning partnership. Sure. So the dry cleaning partnership I have is just a local guy, local dry cleaner. Um, and basically it's pretty simple. Um, I've had it for years. And the basic concept is we clean his house once a month. And in return, every piece of a laundry, which leaves his facility, you know how they normally uh, staple the receipt on there. It's also got a coupon for our service. And, uh, yeah. We've, we've, done had, that before. we've done that before too, with, with, with a lot of success. Yeah, we've had the partnership for, for years. Um, the guy owns three locations, um, and we kind of rotate between the locations. We don't all we don't do all three all the time, and it's been a consistent source of leads for us. And there's various degrees of, of doing what what Derek is is sharing here. I mean, this is you know kind of the the graduate level course, if you will, but. Uh, you know, for us, at the very least, we find this useful to just to identify holidays and, and you know, for, for the events that we want to want to get ready for. Like we're working on Mother's Day now. And if it wasn't for this, we wouldn't think of Mother's Day until like the week before. So, you know, it could be as something as, as, as just starting out as simple as that, just identifying major holidays that you want to be putting together, you know, programs and promotions for. Yeah. And you'll see in May, we do have a Mother's Day program and we work with Dream Dinners, which is a meal preparation place. And our promotion with them has always been um, if you buy our Mother's Day gift bundle, um, you get a free raspberry French toast from Dream Dinners. And the only requirement is you have to go to Dream Dinners and pick it up. And they actually give us those for free because they're figuring if people come into the business to pick up their raspberry French toast, it gives them an opportunity to explain to people, here's what we do etc. So that's been a great cross promotion I've also had with them for years. And I get free stuff to give to my people because they're figuring people that pay for cleaning service will probably also pay for people to help them cook. And so they give me free food for that. And and, and one of the tricks that we, we've learned over the years is if you can partner up with people who've got a uh, well-developed database of, of, of leads and clients, you can cross promote with, with, with emails where you yep. can come up with a promotion and uh, you know, the, 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 the food provider or the dry cleaners can email it to, to all their clients and you reciprocate by taking their deal and emailing it to all your clients. In this dog daycare one, I'm going to bring up because one of the things we do uh, as part of the foundations program is we give you a marketing toolkit that I put together a few years ago. And it includes a flyer, which is what I use with the dog daycares, which is basically um, tips for uh dog owners around cleaning services, what chemicals to avoid, um, allergies you should be concerned about, things like that. And there's nothing in the actual flyer that says anything about the company, but the back page basically says, provided by my maid service and all the details. And uh, we provide that to local dog daycares once a year. So that's our dog daycare cross promotion. And they actually really like it because it's actually really useful educational stuff. It's all stuff that they really do care about. Right. Yeah. It doesn't. But they want their people to know. Yeah. It doesn't hurt them any. It's something they're giving away for free to their customers. Sometimes we'll throw a coupon in there, uh, but a lot of times they just put make it available for free. We've had good luck with that at the veterinaries 
veterinarian yep. offices as well. Um, yeah, it, just, it, it was a little info. It was actually written by my veterinarian. So, oh, really? It, it, yeah, it was actually my veterinarian helped me write it. That's how I know everything's in. It's legit. And I actually ah. originally put it together with him. And the idea was I stole the idea from doctor's offices. You used to go to the doctor's offices before the wonderful day of cell phones. And now we're not bored anymore. But they always had that like wall of educational pamphlets. Oh, and yeah. so this was the veterinary version of that. Mm. They now, still have that at my dental office. But now you have to point at the ones that you want. <laughs> yeah. You're not allowed to touch them. <laughs> well, I don't think they're as effective anymore because we used to all go sit in the waiting room and get bored. So yeah. we find ourselves actually reading that stuff. Now everyone yeah. just whips out their cell phone. Yeah, it's totally true. <laughs> uh, my Another question I had on here, Derek, sure. is yeah. I think that uh, sometimes you'll put in like a, like a theme. Uh, and is that like a theme for the month? So like if it's yeah. Valentine's Day, do you kind of... So Valentine's Day, for example, is the theme in February. We're clearly in February. We had an offer to try to sell gift certificates for Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day was going to be what we were talking about on Facebook. Valentine's Day is what we want to talk about in our email campaigns because we're going to talk about the promotion we're giving away. So a lot of times the theme does carry through. So in May, we're going to be talking about Mother's Day. You know, Mother's Day is the special that we're offering, our partner's dream dinners. It's what we're going to want to talk about on Facebook. It might even be what we do with our PR because we might be making press about how two local businesses have teamed up. Okay. And then like like on here, it, it shows like Mother's Day in May. Does that mean you don't start actually advertising it, any of this stuff until May? Do you sometimes start earlier or... Yeah, I mean, sometimes you definitely do want to start it earlier, but the idea is putting it on the calendar makes you think about it. Now, Mother's Day, right. if I believe, is towards the end of the month, so typically we wouldn't start advertising it. But yeah, if we were doing Easter, for example, which is April 4th this year, we definitely would need to be sending it out in March. Okay, which is goes to Tom's point mm -hmm. of he's working on Mother's Day right now, but he wouldn't be if until a week before if you didn't have the marketing calendar. Right. Now, in our case, we've already kind of got the promotion put together. We already know what it's going to be. We already have our partner. We've right. already written our email copy. A lot of what I do with this is I then hire somebody off of Fiverr to come write these emails and stuff for me so that it's all basically done. We load it into our email program ready to go. So we do this as a once a year surge, and then a lot of it gets automated. Okay, which makes really good sense to me. So you don't have to keep doing it over and over again. Yep. I love and that. Now, Facebook, a lot of times will have generic themes, but I'm also going to share another tip. A lot of people have a lot of problem coming up with ideas for what to post on Facebook. And I've discovered my favorite cheat recently is um, I signed up uh, for a service called uh, Wonder Dads. Um, and I do that personally myself just because I wanted to have ideas for my kids. And it's basically a dollar a week. It's pretty cheap. And every single week they send me a newsletter with ideas for my family. And yes, I know I'm going to have to zoom in for you on this one, guys. But for every single age group, zero to two, three to five, it's got suggested activities for the week. And a lot of times those activities are tied to basically, you know, what the theme is for the week. Is it National Cookie Week or something like that? So it's got ideas of what you can do with kids of all ages. And those that can become great content for my website. Yeah. Um, it's got ideas for the week ahead. Uh, you know, this is how to teach your kid a foreign language. Um, it's got um, five wacky hotels you can take your kid to. So I could very easily turn this to five days worth of Facebook posts talking about, you know, different hotels that are great, great family activities to take your kids to. Um, you know, this is a highlight of something yeah. that a dad and it's like 30 pages of just ideas. So this is how to do a birthday letter with your kids and what you should put in a birthday letter for your kids, um, a family safety challenge for the week, gift ideas for your kids um, every single week. So, I mean, there's something. Yeah, like that. 50 bucks a year. That's a great deal. Yeah. So I steal a lot of content from this. Um, yeah. And a lot of times you have like, you know, there's always like national donut day and things like that and a lot of times they mention that here hey tuesday's national donut day take your kids out to donuts so i post that stuff and people are like how the hell do you know that well this is how is i'm cheating and taking them out of here um and like i said for for a dollar a week i i steal a fair amount of my facebook posts and it's called wonder dads it's called wonder dads i wonder if they have wonder bombs I they might. They I don't know. Like I said, I signed I signed up this for myself um, and I just 
I love the ideas in there. Um, like I said, they've got all sorts of all sorts of things, and a lot of times it'll be pulled from certain things. Like I guess it must be Arnold Palmer's birthday or something, because they're pulling him in, and a lot of times it'll cover stuff. So it just provides a lot of really kind of cool ideas. And I steal my Facebook posts from this, and it's almost always on the theme too. If it, it you know, right now it's spring, so this is all very spring focused stuff. But if we were near Valentine's Day, it would have been having craft activities for Valentine's Day for mom, for example. And I get one of these. I get these every single week for a dollar. Well, yeah, I love it. You know, there's a, I dropped a link in, in, in chat. It's a calendar for um, finding well, national days. It's uh, the national day calendar.com. Yep. And if you go there, you'd see like today is national napping day. And if, if you missed it yesterday, it was national potato chip day. So. Yeah, we, we did potato chip day yesterday. Tim and I were lamenting that we missed out on all the best chips. <laughs> all right. Um, Denise, you said I checked Liz Trotter. I'm not sure exactly like that. Do you guys know exactly what she's talking about? I don't. No, I don't. I don't know what I checked. Oh, she probably checked for wondermoms.com. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I couldn't find wondermoms.com either. Denny, that's what it is. Probably yeah. find something else. But why not just take Wonder Dads? I mean, yeah, we're yeah, just steal the yeah. idea. Yeah. I think, I think they expect the, the, the moms out there know what to do. The dads were yeah, in so the they, they, they have to give us advice. So I'm not sure how many moms would pay a dollar for the week, but we definitely would. Uh, uh. I would. Are you kidding me? For anybody in marketing, that's 50 bucks a year. That's cheap. No, cheap. It, it, well, that and I use it half the time with my own kids. But even if I you didn't yeah. have kids, it's great just to have the ideas. I mean, I can't think of Valentine's crafts ideas. That's not my thing. But it'll have here's a great Valentine craft project for every age group. And you're like, that's a great idea. I'm going to steal that. I'm totally sending this to my son-in-law. He's going <laughs> to love it. It's awesome. I think it's great. And all right. That, that that's what how I basically outsource my Facebook is I've got someone in my office and I email them that every week and I'm like okay we need to post every single day here there's about a hundred ideas in here pick five that make sense whichever ones you like the best yeah, yeah I love that I feel like that makes it super easy a lot of times people just need that idea to jump off of oh yeah well when you first start it's so easy you've got like a hundred ideas but when you post once a day you realize that gets you about a third of way through the year and then you're like I am now stuck. <laughs> My endless ideas so now are, are no longer endless. <laughs> There's no such thing as endless ideas, is there? Yeah. Yeah, that's not a thing. <laughs> we wish that it was, but it's not. So what All type right. of things do you guys normally like to try to put on your calendar? I mean, I talked about email campaigns. I talked about promotions. Um, you saw I like to schedule when we're going to be turning things on and off, PR. Um, if there are other things you've done that you would maybe want to schedule? I'm going to, I'm going to pull up mine and see what I see. Derek's good question. Well, you'll see, for example, on ours, we put down that for our Facebook, for our Facebook, for our webpage, we wanted to add certain pages on a certain schedule. Um, we don't want it to be a once a year initiative or every five years, our website gets dull and we relaunch it. So we're trying to make it so every single month we're putting something out there. Yeah, that makes good sense. Do you make adjustments based on supply and demand? I mean, we were talking earlier that, you know, the, you, you booked like 12 biweekly customers in one week and the ability to hire new technicians seems to be, you know, the labor oh, yeah. market is really, really tight. So do you make adjustments to that plan based upon supply? Yeah, without a doubt. And for us, the things we cut first are the things we pay for. So Home Advisor and Facebook ads and Google ads, those are all going to get turned off and we don't need it. Um, but we do want to keep doing our Facebook and our website, our, our, our free Facebook, like our own personal page in our website, because that's developing your brand. That's stuff that's going to help you with search engine optimization for the long term. But without a doubt, we will turn those paid channels off. What we don't want to do is stop emailing our customers um, because your list becomes stale. Um, we don't want to stop putting things on Facebook and building communities. Right. When you say emailing customers, you know, that that's a, that has several definitions as well. I mean, you're active recurring customers, I'm sure, but it, you probably have a broader, you know, set of, of, of stakeholders, you know, inactive yep. customers, leads that have never gotten a quote, quotes that have never booked. Are there yep. different campaigns or, or 
Yeah, we tag people that we've given a quote to or have requested a quote, not even we gave a quote to, but have never booked. We've got people that we do uh, have done service for before, um, people that had regular service that canceled. Um, and then we actually have a list of people that tend to respond to specials as a whole separate list because we'll offer like last minute specials. Hey, someone canceled tomorrow. I need somebody. And we've discovered there's five or six customers on our list who always took those. So we actually have taken those people and put them on their own list so that they don't get those offers unless we really, really need it. And those people we know, worst case scenario, we can call morning of. Hey, Mrs. So-and-so, we have a cancellation. I know you normally like those. Would you like us to come out today? But we don't want them always taking those uh, discounts because we're hoping we'll get somebody to what use them. What do you call that discounts. list? What do you call that list with those six customers? Or can you share that? <laughs> I, I don't think we call it anything that weird. It's just like reliable for deals or something. Right. It's the people that when we offer 30% off are always on it. Huh. And I, I like that. Reliable for deals works. <laughs> yeah. Now we don't have any type of weird name for it, but there are people that we know that when we offer a special are going to jump on it. You know, what would be really interesting is to, to kind of play around with it and offer like 10% off, five bucks mm -hmm. off, just to kind of see at what point do they. Well, we start yeah. with that. To be clear, the whole reason why we have that list separated is because we start by just saying, hey, you know, we've been really busy and haven't been able to book anything, but we've got openings now. So we'll get people just off of that. Um, and then we'll escalate the offers if we need to. Uh, that reliable for discount people, though, those are the ones that morning of when you walk in and have a cancellation and your cleaner doesn't want to go home, you know you can call and go, hi, so I've got a cleaner with nothing to do. Um, can I send them over for 30% off? And they'll almost always say yes. Nice. Okay. Nice. Being able to fill the schedule like that is awesome. Right. All right. So I'm looking at our calendar. This is what we have, our different tasks. EDDM, Facebook ads door hangers, SEO. So on SEO, we have similar to what you said earlier, Derek, like listing certain things that we're going to do, right? right? This month we're going to do, and this, this version was um, around Moz Local. So do numbers one through five, <laughs> Moz Local. Um, yep. Let's see, website, what are we going to do on the website? Email, kind of marketing. Um, what are we going to do with Google AdWords, Google local, that kind of stuff. Um, networking we have on there. Well, what are we going to do for networking? Who are we going to contact? How many people are we going to contact? That kind of thing. We have like a local magazine called community values. So that's in ours. And that's, that's it. That's all we have. In yeah. I mean, to be honest, the goal really is just to automate your marketing. You want to write it out so you can delegate it to people. Like I said, I'll hire people off of Fiverr to write the emails for the year. Um, yeah. and, it, and it gets easier. The first time you do this, it's a bit of a slog, but it's actually pretty easy at this point because we know our Valentine's promotion. We know our Mother's Day promotion. A lot of those boxes are filled in. And then when we're looking at, for example, on search engine optimization for the website, we're just going, so what haven't we done yet? You know, what services have we not built services page? What cities have we not profiled yet? Um, what directories could we build off of? And once you know the categories, it gets pretty easy. And then, yeah. you know, once again, I, this was meant to be sort of an intro. Normally what I would do is I would start taking these activities and assigning them to people. It doesn't do any good just to throw it on a calendar. Somebody's got to actually do it. So I would normally put somebody's name next to it that it's so-and-so's job to make sure this gets done. Yeah, I feel like that's me. <laughs> right, uh, how many times have I said, yeah, this is great. This is what we're going to do. We're doing all of this stuff. And then I'm like, why didn't that stuff get done? Well, <laughs> who'd you assign it to? Well, like the ether. Why did the ether know that I needed it done? <laughs> so, I guess so I guess for starting out, you know, it's it's easier to, 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 to crawl before you walk, before you run. And it's better to start off with something simpler and execute on that. And then right. once you build them you up. Don't, you, don't, you don't need 14 okay. categories like I've got. You know, I would start simple and over time add things. Because like I said, first year through, maybe you're setting up your email campaign. Well, I think for, for people that are doing this job. Sorry. No, that's you, fine. you glitched little... out for a second, Derek. I thought you were done talking. <laughs> that's fine. I had a bit of lag or something. But yeah, so like the first year through, maybe you're just working on those email campaigns. Um, and then the next year you can add what you're going to do on Facebook and you can layer this stuff. The idea is to just do yeah. something consistently and then do a little bit more every year. And it's really amazing. If you do one thing every single month, you'll feel like you're doing nothing, but you'll get to the end of the year and be like, wow, and we did a Build your calendar based on your team. Our right. logic is, is kind of evolves over time. If we've got 
somebody on our team that can write well, then we would go ahead and say, okay, well, this is a really good time to start, you know, making sure that we're getting everything we can out of the blog. And we would schedule, you know, that within our calendar and come up with a strategy with what keywords we wanted to go after and making sure that we were getting all the proper backlinks and anchor text and all that, you know, stuff, because we got somebody that can do that. You know, Derek, you know, there've been times that we've had some really rocking people that can do, you know, graphic design and things like that. And if we did, we would start, building our calendar. So I said some putting together a calendar with some really awesome, you know, ideas on it that you don't have the means to execute. Use the players you've got. Well, and like I said, a lot of this, like mine looks really big and impressive, but we've been doing it for so long that a lot of it is just meant to make sure we don't forget the stuff. You know, you don't want to be like, remember that great dog daycare flyer we put together? Why didn't we use it for the last three years? So <laughs> just by putting it on the schedule, just make sure that somebody goes, oh yeah, I remember that thing. Let's actually get that out yeah, there. That was again. good. That actually did work. Yeah. Where'd that thing go? Where is it? I know it's out yeah. here somewhere. Right. Yeah. Where is it? Well, when you were talking about it, Derek, I'm looking around my office trying to see mine. Like, Gone. Go I've got one of those. One's it's in SharePoint there. somewhere, but it doesn't help us because we can't get yeah. any SharePoint. Yeah. <laughs> Microsoft yeah. hates us right now. I have them um, as a trifold brochure. So I do have stacks of them that I like to stick out every once in a while and there was another like if you have those there are some really inexpensive little stands that yeah. you can get to hold your little um, brochures and people will i found that if i give it to them in a stand they'll leave them up a lot longer than if i just give them a stack yeah so if like you put them on the counter it feels like clutter yeah and they start like get knocked over and knocked off and pretty soon like i know they're going into the garbage right I'm like, yep. i paid money for those don't throw them away but putting them in a little stand and people hold on to them a lot longer when we go to re refill them uh, a lot of times they're well i mean they're almost always still there and we can kind of have an idea as to how many were taken so people are still taking those too which is kind of different from the doctor dentist office right. I think it is enough info. It's it, it's good enough information that people are like, oh, what's this? Okay, they just don't even think to go and uh, Google some of the stuff. Hey, can't you just don't think to Google every single thing because right. you would never be done Googling. Well, and once again, a lot of this stuff layers. Part of the goal for me is, and I, we're getting back there in Cincinnati. For a couple of years, I wasn't involved. So I just got back and went involved with the company. I, I bought, got part of my old company back. Um, but it used to be when we talked to people, we'd say, so how did you hear about us? And the answer was, God, you guys are just everywhere. You know, my dry cleaner gave me a coupon and my dog daycare gave me a coupon and you emailed me and then I was on Facebook. And, you know, so that's kind of what we were going for. And a lot yeah. of times, no one of these things is what push, pushes them across the finish line. You just want them to kind of get the idea of when it comes time to pick a service, they're like, God, what is that company I saw everywhere? They might yeah. tell you it was Google, but our follow-up question was always, well, why did you find us on Google? Why did you pick us when you saw us on Google? Because there's 10 people on that first page. Right. And a lot of times they're responsible because well, you were just everywhere. So I figured you were the big company. So I was looking for three estimates and figured I should get the one that's everywhere. The one that everybody already goes with. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. So uh, I think that's most of the basics around the marketing calendar. Yeah. Anybody yeah. have any questions around I know, the marketing I normally, calendar? I normally make my presentation short because I get lots of questions that I answer. People mm -hmm. are like, what's this? What's that? But nobody's asking any questions. Well, so, it's, it's hard on here because yeah, of StreamYard. But Tom is hooking us up with Zoom here real soon. So we'll be uh, much easier. I is Wednesday the first time we're going to use Zoom, Tom? Yeah, Wednesday we're going to use Zoom for the um, alumni reunion, the Foundation's alumni reunion. Um, and we've got the technology figured out. We just need to figure out uh, how we get people to, uh, you know, into the actual Zoom call. So basically, it's going to, we're going to have two audiences. We'll be able to stream to you know all the the live stream channels we've been streaming to so if you want to watch you just do what you're doing right now but if you actually want to be inside the zoom call so we can have you know q a and, and participate in a more active way we need to set up a mechanism where you can sign up for that and we can get you the link and so forth and that's 
the part that, 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 that we really need to figure out. But for Wednesday, we know who the alumni are. We know who's going to be there. So we're just going to give them the link and they're all going to be in the Zoom call. All right. Before Derek answers Robin's question, y'all come to the Wednesday call with your St. Patrick's Day regalia on. You will be glad you did. That's all I'm going to say about that. All right. Now. So one, one of the questions we got to what do I use Fiverr for in my marketing efforts? Um, I use them for a lot of stuff. Um, I will hire people from there to do copywriting for me. Um, I've had them make marketing jingly songs for me before. There's people on Fiverr that for uh, five bucks will take a, basically a little poem you write and turn it into a song for you. Um, I have them do basic graphic designs. Um, I like to make like Christmas versions of our logo and stuff, and I'll have them do Christmas and Halloween versions of our logo for a few bucks. Um, you know, if you have an idea, there's people on there that you can get to do stuff for pretty cheap. Now you're going to have to give them pretty specific directions. You can't, you know, these are not the people you can say, Hey, I've got an idea for a mother's day promotion, some type of basket of products, do it for me. What you have to say is, for Mother's Day, we are giving away a basket of 12 products. Here's what they are. You know, I would like you to write something that says this type of thing. I would like it to be humorous. And you can normally see examples. Like I'm a terrible copywriter. Tom and Liz can tell you I've got terrible grammar. I tend to use the wrong words all the time. Um, people make fun of me because I say roof when I mean ceiling all the time and other things like that. Um, I'll say things like, so we're painting the roof. And people will be like, I don't think you're painting really? the roof. Yeah. <laughs> and so... Um, I don't write my own emails because I'm terrible at it, but I'll hire people who've got kind of a fun, quirky voice, which I don't have. But what I probably love them for the most, just simple graphic design stuff where I've just got some type of crazy idea. If you know what I'd love to do, can you take this picture and put a cleaner in it? Can you, you know, take our team meeting and add Bernie to it? You know, that type of stuff that, you know, honestly, some of you guys probably do with Promeo and stuff, but you know what? I'm a little busy and if I could pay someone $5 to do it and I don't need to think about it, I'd rather pay someone $5. Yeah, you do it. You can really get that stuff done on literally for five dollars. So I'm just gonna add on for even the tiniest little thing. But you can get a lot of stuff done for five bucks. <laughs> yeah. I do love Fiverr. Yeah. Well, and a couple of years ago, I, some of our friends turned their employee their employee uh, uh, manuals into wraps and stuff, which was pretty hysterical. So, yeah. so, so we saw some people yeah. like turn, turn their attendance policy into wraps. So funny, so good. I mean, yeah. people are definitely listening to that, right? If you want people to remember what your attendance policy is, that, that'll that get them to pay attention. That's the, that's the crazy type of stuff you can do with Fiverr where, you know, I just don't have that creative gene. Yeah, you do about some stuff, just that's not, that's yeah, nice. not that stuff. Fortunately, I've got a 13 year old daughter who's quite graphic. So she's starting to take over that stuff for me. Like she actually designed the logo for our latest cleaning company. So that that's kind of fun. She did. That's cool. Yep. You have it. I want to see. Uh, That's awesome. Congratulations, Lindsay. Yeah. How much did you pay her for that, Derek? <laughs> Five bucks. <laughs> I know. I'm like, we all know how cheap Derek is. I'm pretty cheap. Yeah. I'm, I'm working sure out. you're not as cheap as you were before you met and started dating Laura because she's only so cheap. She's not going yeah, to get away with some of that stuff. She's not nearly as uh, tolerant of my cheap. She's got, so she's got artistic. Oh. She's got artistic ability, is what you're saying. Because you said <laughs> yeah, she's I'm graphic, sorry. and that don't, you don't know what that means. <laughs> she's got artistic ability. Do, yes. do we just get done talking about white people right yeah. now? Roof, ceiling, mm -hmm. same thing. Exactly. Yeah, that was it. Trying to share Good my example. screen again. All right. So that was the one. Um, See and. Again. Oh, okay. So, so it, she can it, dine now? Yeah, it, it's, it makes sense uh, if you're local because uh, that is a mountain called Horsetooth Mountain, which is in uh, Fort Collins and is a real well-known icon. And then for those that know Colorado, the Sea of Colorado has got the yellow in it like that. So we wanted the R to be similar. Um, and then obviously the white or the waters to imply cleaning, but uh, Horsetooth Mountain is actually... Uh, also Horsetooth Reservoir, so it makes a little bit of sense. And we wanted a logo that kind of screamed local. When people see this, we want them to know local company. This is not some company that's not from around here. Yeah, that that's actually pretty darn cool. Oh, so, yeah. I like that. Yeah. All right, well, I want to share a little bit about Foundations, Tom, if we have a couple minutes. I know yeah. that 
All right, let me, um, uh, let's see if I can figure out how to get on a tab. All right, so I just wanted to show a little bit about what Foundations is for, I, are you able to see my screen, Tom? Yep. All right, awesome. Um, so this is the mansion that you hear us talk about. And let me see if I can scroll down a little bit. It's kind of big here on my screen. And this is the mansion. How many bedrooms does it have? 12 bed, 12 bath. 12 bed, 12 bath. 12 and uh, a half really bath, nice. actually. Well, oh, because the half bath downstairs, right? Yep. Yeah, we have a little extra one. And is if I sleep in the office, bedrooms? you could argue it's 13 beds, but. It has been known to, to accommodate more. I think it's sleep. Yeah. I think the maximum number of people that it can sleep is like 56. That's a lot of people. Yeah, because of the the number of beds and all that. We do have rooms that have more than one bed and all that good stuff. Yeah. So this is it's um, October 3rd through the 10th this year, which is Sunday. Oh, there's Laura. And uh, Laura has always been a big proponent of everything having to do with uh, foundations. Uh, I know that she um, had a great time there, even though her company was really large when she went there. She really enjoyed herself. Um, this just some of the basic stuff. Tom, are you able to put this link in the um, comments for me? The, uh... I don't have to go over everything. Cleaningbusinessbuilders.com. Yeah, this this cleaningbusinessbuilders.com link. Can you put it into our chat? Uh, in stream uh, All right, done. I can't see you. This one of the problems with this uh, format is when I'm sharing, I can't see y'all. We're gonna, so you know, can we do like a, a fundraiser, like a GoFundMe to buy you a second monitor? <laughs> yeah, I have one right back there. Can you see it? I will buy you like a cable to connect it. Yeah, there's there's two of them back there too. Yeah, I I, I really like my little laptop, but you're right, I need to. This just the three of us. This is uh obviously me. This is Tom. This is Derek. Just some stuff about us. So for those of you that don't know us, don't know who we are. Uh, this is Heather Gilch Canning. If you're on Facebook, her last name is Gilch hyphen Canning. Here, her name is uh, just Canning. She was one of the people that Derek was talking about earlier, where kept harassing us to do another foundations, even though we're like, we're done, we're done, we're not doing it anymore. It's like, please, please, we're begging you. Her and uh, Trisha Lake also. Uh, yeah, here's some just some of the stuff that you get clean procedure manual customized for solo or teams so a lot of what we give you are some template type things that you can modify for your own use put your own logo on modify them in whatever way you want to um, but as Derek said earlier we don't push just one way so you rarely are going to get just one thing so like a cleaning manual, you're going to get multiple copies of cleaning manuals, different cleaning manuals for different ways of cleaning. If what if you're all natural, you might have something completely different going on. So that's that's part of what that is. Bill rate calculator, customized plan to get more reviews. All of these types of things are modified for you. The thing that is probably outside of what Derek has already shared, one of the things that I think is most impactful is that for every class that we have, we have a workshop. So you have a class and then you go and you create stuff around your business in the workshop. And that's why we make such a big deal about you go home with all of these completed items. So this is cool. So you get six months of free access to our MMA groups when you join Foundations 11. Uh, so those of you that have heard about our MMA groups, I know a lot of you actually on this call are in our um, MMA groups. But for those of you that are curious about that, you do get six months free access. And not just free, um, not just access, uh, free participation. This is the mansion again. I think this picture is a little bit better. You can see how big it is. Uh, free, all your food is taken care of. All of your lodging obviously is taken care of. And one of the other really, really big things that people love is that it's 24 hour non 
stop networking. People will take a break or they'll get up early in the morning and they'll walk the beach. They will, at night, they're talking about work. They're doing homework. Sometimes they're not. Sometimes they're playing, what's that game that they always play? What's that one? Cards Against Humanity. Yeah, Cards Against Humanity. That's always popular. Uh, We do have a lot of classroom time. This classroom here is actually at Castle Keepers. I think we do that on, in the past, we've done it on Tuesdays. I think this year we're doing it on Wednesday. Here's Samantha and Katie in the background there. And just some more information about what they got from the program. Uh, Don Raffler, there's Katie again. Uh, if you're not sure if Foundations is a good fit for you, uh, download this PDF. It's just a little uh, survey, a little quiz that you can take that will give you some information about what we do and where does your company fall within what we're going to teach. Do you have all this information already and foundations isn't right for you or, oh, wow, okay, I'm sort of lacking in these areas and I need a little bit of help here. Um, I think that is it on this page that I really wanted to share. Can you think of anything else that I might not have hit on, guys? No, like you said, we're going to be talking about for the next three weeks. So uh, we don't want to talk people's ears off. So we'll hit some other angles on other days. Yeah. And we are at the top of the hour, so from a timing standpoint, you know, this ah. is, uh, works out well. Tomorrow, we're going to be talking about financial statements and what to do with them. You know, over the last you know month or so, we spent a fair amount of time talking about a P&L or an income statement and broke that down and explained, you know, how to, how to use that. We'll, we'll, we'll touch upon that again, but we're also going to introduce a balance sheet in a uh, statement of cash flows. And all three of those together are, they work together. And those three together are generically what you call financial statements for, for a business. And uh, we're going we're gonna to do a deep dive into that. And um, it's going to be fun. It's always, well, we know always, we'll be seeing Robin. <laughs> Robin we all does love as fun as spreadsheets. And <laughs> tomorrow I'm going to have to go find something green, but it's got me thinking here because I'm sitting in front of a green screen. So if I'm wearing green, basically I'll look transparent. You're going to have a different background, I think, on Wednesday. Yeah. It's going to be interesting to see what background Tom comes up with. Yeah, I don't know. I just might wear a green shirt and all you'll see is my head. Oh, that, that would be interesting, Tom. That would be fun to watch. I think I've seen you floating out there on brick space before or something. Yeah. yeah good. Yeah. All right. Everybody, Can I want to see what your green uh, uh, paraphernalia is on Wednesday. All right. That's it. Thanks, guys. All right. See you later. See you tomorrow. Bye. Bye-bye.